Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So, at this point, we have managed to do some conversions. We've learned about moles. We've learned how to convert moles to grams, grams to moles. But we're not done. Not yet. I mean, we just started, so it would be weird for us to be done already. Um, now we're going to be taking a look at stuff on page 12 of your book. Converting moles to particles. Yeah, particles. So... One of the things that we talked about on the original page for moles was we talked about how moles are sort of connected to a number of particles or a number of pieces, basically, right? We ended up saying that, the, that a mole is equal to a very large number, a very large number of particles. So this is called Avogadro's number, named after that guy from Italy who came up with this whole idea. And we will use the term particle to mean all the pieces of something. So you could use it to mean like all the atoms or all the molecules or all the students in the classroom, I guess, if you really wanted to. Uh, we would never get this many students, though. So we're still basically doing a conversion. There's no real difference between moles to grams, grams to moles, and moles to particles. They all still are conversions. The difference is just what conversion factor we use. So because they're still conversions, it's still all about the conversion formula, right? Have, want, lose, gain. It's all about this, everything that we're going to do. The only difference is that before you put moles and grams into the conversion part in the middle. Now you're going to be putting Avogadro's number. Now, what is Avogadro's number? You already know it. Well, sort of. We talked about it already. One mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles. Or, you know, stuff. Now, obviously, you're going to need to know how to use scientific notation in your calculator, unless you want to sit there and type in 23 zeros. Most calculators can't handle 23 zeros. They can handle scientific notation, though. So let's try some examples, because that's basically all that you have to do here, is just be able to work with this new conversion factor. So the example in your notes here is your 25 moles of copper atoms. OK, so we've got 25 moles of copper. Well, we want particles, usually shortened to part of copper, equals brackets. We want to get rid of moles, right? Because we've already got them, and we want to get rid of those. And we want to get those particles. And there we go. We've set it up. It's just a conversion. So the only problem is, of course, for most people, remembering how to type in particles. So it depends, again, on which calculator you have. Right now, I've got a Texas Instrument TI-34 in my hand. If you have a different one, you got to check which button you've got to push. It's probably going to be either a double E, an EXP, or a 10 to the power of button. OK, so it depends on which model you've got. Anyway, I'm going to go 25 times. 6.02, and then I'm, for this calculator, I hit it's a double E button, and it's 23. So on my screen, it looks something kind of like, oh, can you see it? That, okay? So you'll see the E there does a lot of work. That's what does the times 10 part, right? That E represents all of this. So you don't have to type it in. Now, you can try typing it in, okay? But you have to put brackets. What do I mean by that? I'll show you. Let me just hit equals here and write down the answer. So we get 1.5 times 10 to the 25. So there's a lot. Now, what was I meaning? OK, so if we clear this. Let's say I go 25 times 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. This is another way of trying to write it. Now, every calculator is a little different. Uh, this one here, it'll work out fine. No big deal. Um, other times, though, it can get a little confused, especially if you end up putting them in the wrong order. What do I mean by that? Uh, let's see. 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. I'm not sure why I had to look that up. I have had that memorized for so many years now. Oh, and this one worked out fine either way. So it looks like the TI-34 
34 is pretty uh, robust in its ability to do logic for you. So I guess you luck out. If you've got one of the other calculators, though, it might end up giving you the wrong answer because it thinks that, you know, maybe instead of trying to multiply these two numbers, you're trying to multiply 25 times the 23, for example, and then take it all to the power of something. Doesn't matter. Give it a try. You've got the buttons. Let's take a look at another one, okay? So the first one was how many atoms are in 25 moles of copper. The next one is how many moles are there in 5 times 10 to the 25 particles. Okay, so we've gone from moles to particles. Now we're going to go particles to mole. Let's get a different color on the board. We've only got black so far. So for this next one, it says that we have 5 times 10 to the 25 particles of copper. It doesn't actually say what it is. I'm going to assume it's copper because it was copper in the first part. And I want moles of copper. Now, you'll notice for this part, we're not pulling out the periodic table in any way. We're not calculating molar mass or anything like that because it doesn't involve this. This entirely has to do with this conversion factor, none of the ones we already learned previously. So in this case, we're starting with particles, and then we want moles, which means particles go on the bottom, moles go on the top. So we got particles down here and moles up here. So moles is 1, particles is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So we're going to get, uh, let's see here, 5 times 10 to the 25, 5 e 25 divided by 6.02 e to the 23. And that tells me that it is about 83 moles of copper. There we go. So that's how you do this. You'll see on page 12 that you guys have some uh, examples that you can attempt there. Uh, I'm going to leave the answers in the drive. It'll be in the teacher's notes, right? So you can check it if you've got it right or not. You will then see also that on page 13, there is more practice along with, of course, the answers. 13 and 14 and 15. And then 16. Well, 16 is going to involve a bit of a detour, but that'll be next time. So see what you guys can do. I know uh, another short video at it turns out that sometimes that can happen. I Don't worry, I'm sure I'll be able to find something else that I can talk about for a long time. Um, good luck, guys, and I will see you next time.